Hey everyone, it's been a while since I've gotten on here and done a video, but I wanted to get on and talk to you guys about what the hard, hardest job in the world really is. So what do you think the hardest job in the world is? I, it may be different for other people, but I truly believe that this is the hardest job in the world. And that is being a mom. Being a mom is one of the hardest jobs in the world. Why do I say that over, you know, somebody that has a really manual job, like manual labor job, or somebody that's like the CEO of a company? Um, the reason I believe that a mom is the hardest job in the world is because there is such little recognition. I don't get recognized for doing an amazing job every day when you know, I'm taking care of my kids. Nobody really pats me on the back and says, good job, Lorray. People don't do that. And sorry, I'm shaky. I'm doing my best, but I shake a lot. But anyway, so yeah, being a mom is a tough, tough job. Probably one of the hardest jobs out there. And I, you know, I this has been weighing heavy on my heart lately, so I wanted to share it with you. But you know, when you're a stay-at-home mom specifically. I can't really talk for um, a mom that works outside of the home because I've never actually had to do that on a consistent basis. When Raylan was little, I did work a few hours a week, but it wasn't anything to consider really working outside of the home. But I do know what it's like to be a stay-at-home mom. And we, as stay-at-home moms, on our side of the picture, I know there's always this argument, but we're just talking about stay-at-home moms because that's what I've experienced with. We sacrifice a lot to stay at home. We sacrifice money. We sacrifice having that second income, living off of one income. We sacrifice careers. Um, you know, I always wanted to be a teacher. I went to school to be a teacher and I gave that up so I could stay home and I don't regret that one bit. But we sacrifice having adult conversations on a regular basis. We talk to our kids and um, you know, sometimes we join Facebook groups. If you're lucky, you have other moms that want to go on play dates with you, but sometimes that's just exhausting and you'd rather stay home and not do that. Um, but we, you know, we sacrifice a lot of things as moms, as stay at home moms. I know there's a whole different realm that you sacrifice as a mom that works outside of the home. But as a stay at home mom, you, you do, you give up a lot of yourself to give 110% to your kids 24 hours a day, every day of the week. And it's really, really challenging. So, you know, as when kids are babies, let's start here. When kids are babies, when babies are babies, is that how you say it? Um, they need all of your attention. They need, they can't do anything for themselves. This is simple knowledge. Everybody knows this. But as kids start getting older, they start gaining independence. And it's so important for parents, moms, dads, whoever, to nurture that independence. And the reason I say that is because you need to teach your kids, you need to teach them slash allow them to have consequences. Let them have that independence and make those decisions when they're in a secure setting, when they're safe and secure and the outcome of their decision isn't going to probably affect them for the rest of their life. And they can make mistakes and learn from them while they have your guidance, while they're in your home and, you know, have the protection of safety. You know, they're safe in their home and they, they need to learn that when they're still at home. So, you know, as your kids start getting older and older, they're gaining this independence. You need to nurture that. And, you know, it, as they continue to get older and older, you you definitely start seeing the independence grow. For example, Raylan, who is now, well, I say seven. She will be seven, it's August. So two more months and my oldest baby will be seven years old. And you know what, just this summer she's figured out how to do? She can climb on my counter, which is disgusting, but she can climb up there. She gets her own cup. She gets her sister a cup. She pushes a stool over. She gets in the refrigerator, gets whatever they want to drink, and she basically can do breakfast. I mean, she's not over there making eggs by herself, but she can feed both of them, and she can take care of them, and they don't need me. I can sit there and have coffee if I want to, and they just do it on their own. She's proud of the independence she's getting. And of course, as a second child, I'm a second child, Steve's a second child, Raylan's kind of the oddball out here being the oldest. As a second child though, you learn so much quicker. So even though Payson's only four and a half, her independence is coming quicker than Raylan's did because she's watching Raylan and learning and wanting to be like her sister. The difference with Payson is, you know, her medical stuff, sometimes she is a little bit more dependent on me. I'm a little bit more needy, I guess, just because she has some medical issues. But the point of this is, as your kids get older, they become more independent. 
And what I'm finding and experiencing right now, and all of you other moms that have kids older than mine that have already gone through this, you're probably smiling and chuckling at yourself and laughing a little bit going, Phew, I'm glad I'm past that stage. But what I'm realizing in this time in our life is there's a shift happening. There's this shift happening of my kids don't need me as much and I'm kind of lost. Like I, I don't know. What do you do when your kids don't need you anymore and you're a stay at home mom? That's your whole job. Like what, what do you do? So I've been pondering this and you know, the question ar arises in my head, can you be a good mom who's working? And, um, this question, you know, I, I know this answer, but have you ever really thought about it? Like, especially for any stay at home moms that all of a sudden their kids don't need them anymore. And you're like, okay, well, I can do laundry all day. I can do the dishes, but what other purpose do I have? So, you know, a few years ago, I needed to lose weight and all of that. But mainly, I needed to do something for me because I did give up my teaching career to stay at home with my kids. Again, don't regret that decision at all. I would have done it in a heartbeat. I would do it again. But I needed something for me because let's be honest, talking to anybody or, or only people under the age of three is really lonely. So I decided to join one of those pyramid schemes. Just kidding. Those aren't legal. It's not a pyramid scheme. But this is not about a pyramid scheme or an MLM. But I did decide to join an MLM. I was one of those people that believed that it was a pyramid scheme. I was so, I, I, I did so much research because I was like, I am going to get screwed. So anyway, I did. I researched what I was doing. I loved the product. It was helping me. So I decided to join because what I realized is that if I joined, even if I never did anything with it, it allowed me to be part of a community, part of a group of adults that I could have conversations with that weren't my kids, that you know, could have an intellectual conversation and make me feel like I was an adult again and not just this mom that was losing her mind talking to kids. So anyway, when I joined, I, you know, I kind of had intentions of possibly working at one day, but really I did it in my spare time. I helped people sometimes. I, other times I went months without doing a single thing because my being a mom came first. But I've noticed this shift in our life happening over the past few months, um, probably about six, seven months, maybe even since Raylan started kindergarten. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, they don't need me as much. They're both in school some. Like, what am I going to do with my time? I still don't want to get a job outside of the house because, you know, Payson's still in preschool. Raylan, I want to be here when she gets off the bus. But what am I supposed to do with my time? What do you do with your time when your kids are becoming more independent? So... I did what made sense, and I decided to kind of jump feet first, head first, whatever that saying is, into my business. I figured I already have it. I've had it for a while. I might as well dig in, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it, but what the transition from stay-at-home mom, main job, just being mom, to part-time mom for and I say that as in they don't need me as much. And so now I'm like part-time mom and full-time work-at-home mom. This transition has been, I, I am feeling strange. I don't even know how to explain it. I'm feeling very strange about it though. And I think um, what is so weird to me and kind of amazing and it's just kind of like this mystery is that Every stay-at-home mom has to go through this phase. I know they do because every kid grows up and all of a sudden you aren't needed 24 hours a day. They can play on their own. They can get along half the time. They can get snacks. They can do all of these things on their own now and you're just left with this time. And you don't, you have to figure out what you're going to do with that time. You know, I'd, everybody has a different desire to do it, different passion. But what nobody talks about, especially if you go from, stay at home mom to a work at home mom is the guilt, the guilt that you have to work through. And, um, this is what I'm currently struggling with in my life. And I'm going, this is part of a series. So if you want to find out what the guilt is and why I'm struggling with this so much, you're going to have to join me again in a couple of days. And I will be back to tell more of this story, but I want you to think about that in the meantime. If you have been a mom that has already gone through this, feel free to message me and share with me how you dealt with this guilt that I'm talking about. If you are a mom to little people, you want to watch this because 
you're going to learn something that you might be shocked about that you didn't know was going to come. And I'm assuming every mom goes through this. And if you just want to hear what I'm talking about, um, I will be coming back live and I'll be posting a blog of this and my other ones that are be coming up to uh, talk about this topic more. But thank you guys for jumping on and I hope to see you next time. Have a good night. Bye.